Okay. <clears throat> Let me thank everybody for uh, joining us here. Uh, put simply, the reason that I'm here is to emphasize that uh, the situation with this bridge may be a regional issue, but it is a national concern. And we want to make sure that uh, national attention and resources are available to help the state and local authorities who are resolving this and working toward a safe reopening of the bridge. This is something that impacts tens of thousands of people who count uh, on the ability to drive across the DeSoto Bridge every day. It's an issue for the businesses, depending on the customers who go across the bridge. Uh, of course, for people who may be in need of emergency services. Uh, and even for people outside this region, it is important that we restore this connection quickly because uh, like so much about the Memphis region, uh, it is uh, uh, an area of national logistical importance. I want to emphasize how encouraged I have been to see the cooperation that's been going on here since the issue was first discovered on May 11th. We've been collaborating with state partners to help them to get repairs done safely and expeditiously and to manage the travel delays that are happening in the interim. And what I have seen is across local, state, and federal boundaries, across the line between Arkansas and Tennessee, uh, across party lines and without regard to politics, uh, there's been enormous collaboration. Uh, in particular, I want to thank uh, the leaders of Tennessee and Arkansas Departments of Transportation, uh, Clay, uh, Commissioner Clay Bright on the Tennessee side and uh, Chairman uh, Robert Moore on the Arkansas side for their responses to this closure, uh, for the planning on how to safely reopen the bridge and for the engagement across those boundaries I was talking about earlier. Uh, I've uh, also had a chance to visit with Mayor Strickland and Mayor McClendon of West Memphis uh, and heard about the creativity and the hard work that they have put in to supporting their residents uh, through this challenging time. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Representative Cohen uh, for your leadership, for having encouraged me from literally our first conversation uh, to come out here uh, to Memphis. Um, and uh, as you likely know, uh, Representative Cohen and his colleagues on the House Transportation Infrastructure Committee uh, have some very important work ahead of them uh, in just a few days uh, as they return to Washington and take up uh, the committee markup on a bill that will uh, have a lot of very important uh, connections to the President's American Jobs Plan. Uh, and uh, I want to acknowledge and thank Senator Blackburn, who was with us earlier today and enjoyed uh, uh, being able to uh, hear her perspective uh, and uh, see her commitment to these issues as well. Uh, we were able to view the bridge, uh, see progress on repairs, and spend time with the authorities working these issues on the ground to see what they need and where we can be helpful. And I also want to acknowledge our personnel on the ground from the Federal Highway Administration in both Tennessee and Arkansas, uh, led by Acting Administrator Pollock, uh, who have been uh, responsive from day one on this. We also got to hear from people and companies from a small family-owned uh, trucking business all the way to FedEx about how the closure has impacted them. Now, our understanding of the state of play is that phase one work is complete. That was the work to stabilize the bridge. And now phase two, the structural work to fully strengthen the fractured area is underway. Uh, a final step will be not only uh, completing the physical work, but the inspections that are so important to address any remaining issues and have been underway since the first. Uh, and I know our state partners will be here in just a moment to cover that in, in greater detail. I also just want to emphasize I, I understand how challenging this has been in different ways for different uh, people in the communities of, of Memphis, uh, West Memphis, and beyond. Uh, we've heard from uh, uh, through the mayor about uh, trucks having been rerouted onto residential streets in West Memphis because their navigation app sent them there. We've heard about people in the hospitality industry seeing their hours cut after everything they've been through with COVID uh, because of the impact on customers. Uh, and heard from uh, truckers who have pointed to losses in the millions every day uh, from the delays and the reroutes that have been responsible. We are, of course, grateful and glad that this was detected without any loss of life but that doesn't mean the closure hasn't been painful. So we're doing everything we can to help. Safety is, of course, the first and top priority, and Federal Highway Administration personnel have been meeting daily with Tennessee and Arkansas to support the safe repair of the bridge. 
uh, did what they could to help uh, toward getting phase one completed ahead of schedule uh, and are also partnering to reduce the traffic delays on the other bridge, the I-55 bridge, uh, helping to do things like uh, uh, quickly restriping a critical interchange and uh, was pleased to see that the average travel time on I-55 uh, went from a 47-minute delay two weeks ago to a 27-minute uh, delay on average last week. Uh, I'll also note that Federal Highway Administration has uh, initiated a program assessment of the Arkansas Bridge Program last week to make sure that the right programs and policies and, and people are in place. And we hope that that will yield more answers about what happened and how we can prevent uh, things like this in the future. The other thing I want to emphasize is uh, the interconnectedness of this country that I think is uh, so much on display in this critical shipping and logistics hub that Memphis and West Memphis represent. You've got highways that connect from all the way to Canada and Mexico and across the U.S. coming through here, carrying over 100 million tons of freight annually, uh, major river barges, some of which we saw passing under the DeSoto Bridge, uh, five Class I rail lines, fifth largest inland port in the country, and of course, an exceptionally important cargo airport. And it's one more reminder, just like the Colonial Pipeline incident was, of how much we depend on critical infrastructure that most days we may not even think about. And our, our country's got some work to do in this regard. We have 45,000 bridges in poor condition in this country, and Americans cross those bridges 178 million times every single day. America has fallen out of the top 10 in infrastructure. And if we want to be the leading, remain the leading country in the world, we've got to make sure we have world-class infrastructure to match. Uh, I know that's something that people understand regardless of, of party, regardless of region, uh, and we're doing everything we can to make that a reality. So uh, with that, it's my pleasure to hand it over to Representative Cohen, a, a fierce advocate for this region, for infrastructure, uh, and for making sure that we get this bridge addressed uh, safely and expeditiously. Uh, Representative, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Secretary Buttigieg made a special visit here to Memphis. I appreciate it greatly, and I think everybody in Tennessee and Arkansas do as well. I know Representative Tory Harris, who's here as well as all the other folks who've been recognized, appreciate it because it's important for our area. He recognizes Memphis as America's distribution center and as the center of the country and how this I-40 bridge carries commerce all throughout the country and how what happens here has an effect everywhere else. He knows the history of the railroads and the, 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 the river and the runways and, and the, the roads and the rails, and that's Memphis. We've had a good opportunity to talk. Some situations in Memphis we need to help improve with jobs transportation, because transportation means jobs. So we're fortunate that he's here today. And uh, some of you know I had polio as a child, so the idea of a, of a uh, poster child is something I've kind of grown up with. It's kind of a shame that Memphis has to be the poster child for, for infrastructure failure. But because of that, we've given a whistle, a canary in the, in the coal mine, to the rest of the country about what they need to look out for in the way of infrastructure deficiencies and possible problems and why this bill is so important to protect American citizens as well as American commerce. And I guess do I introduce Mayor Strickland or do I just kind of peel off? That's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Congressman. I know I'm biased, but I am so happy that the Secretary of Transportation is a former mayor. Mayors get it. As Mayor McClendon said earlier, once a mayor, always a mayor. Mayors are practical. They get things done. And I think that's good news for this and for the years to come for this country, for towns and cities all across America. Thank you, um, Mr. Secretary, for being here. Uh, I want to echo this one thing he said. I've, I've been so happy with the cooperation that's happening from, from city government to state government to federal government. Both our governors have come here. I spoke to uh, Senator Haggerty. I know Senator Blackburn was here. Uh, mayors throughout the region. Our chamber has been just invaluable in this situation, the business community. Democrat, Republican, all different uh, sorts of folks all working together to fix this bridge as fast as we can. Wouldn't that be great if we did that more often? Wouldn't it be great if that sense of cooperation could live through Washington, D.C. a little bit more? It does in Memphis. So 
Good luck in Washington uh, bringing everyone together. I hope it happens. But I want to thank uh, all the parties, particularly Tennessee Department of Transportation, because it's my understanding they're taking the laboring war on fixing this. Thank you. I want to introduce one of my favorite mayors, Mayor McClendon. Thank you, Mayor Strickland. It's an honor, um, honorable secretary, for you to be here to, to lay our eye on what's going on here in our area. Uh, I want to thank everyone that's been here and been involved. Uh, West Memphis is the home of America's Crossroads. We hold our 40 and our 55. Over 60,000 vehicles travel through the city of West Memphis every day. And can you all imagine when one bridge is down and we have to divert all that traffic to one bridge that only is used to holding uh, 20,000 vehicles? That has paralyzed our city, but I'm encouraged after speaking with the secretary that we can do some things and get these done, things done quickly. Uh, West Memphis is a city that I love, a city that I depend on, a city that I know that we can make things happen here in our city. So with the help of what everyone is doing right here, I'm, I'm encouraged that help is on its way to help move West Memphis forward, as well as our Mid-South area. I mean, so much commerce come across of that 55 and 40 bridge once it's open, and we want to continue making that happen because so many people in West Memphis works in Memphis as well as Miffians works in West Memphis. Uh, so many businesses travel that, that road every day. And when you have Port and 55, you have industries, truckers that's going from one part of the country to the next side of the country from the north, south, east, and west. So definitely uh, infrastructure plan has to be important for this country. This bridge being down behind us is true evidence that an infrastructure plan must be did in Washington to help the people of the United States, and especially here in Memphis, Tennessee, and West Memphis. Thank you. Secretary Pete, we really appreciate you being here today and the support that that shows. Thank you. Congressman Cohen, the same. Thank you. Mayors, thank you. And Commissioner Moore. And that, Stephanie Pollack, I appreciate you being here. It means a lot to us as far as the support it shows and what we're trying to do. I've told you all before, safety is number one for us as far as getting this done. Safety for our workers that are working on that bridge right now, the bridge inspectors, most in the after right after that uh, is safety of the public. Once they get back on that bridge, we want to be sure that bridge is safe. Um, we've talked about the permanent fix, and that's what we are working on right now. And then uh, Secretary mentioned the inspection that's going on also as far as looking at the bridge right now and any long-term issues with the fracture that that happened out there. So right now we're in our phase two. Phase one, we completed on the 25th. We completed all our design documents Saturday night, the 29th, sent that to Kiwit. They are in the process of getting that material for the permanent fix right now between the post tensioning and the, um, and the uh, plates that will go in to, uh, to reinforce the fracture. We are expecting delivery of those materials late June right now. That's where it is in process. The prep work will start uh, probably this week as far as making sure we're prepped with the existing beam for those materials that are coming in. So we'll be ready for it once it hits the job. The, uh, and some of the pieces we have on this are huge. The post tension brackets that we're going to put on each end, 150 foot section, they're four feet by eight foot brackets. They weigh 20,000 pounds a piece. The rods that we're putting in, we have eight rods that are going to take the tension out of that uh, tie girder at the bottom. We have eight rods, three inches thick, so you can imagine getting that kind of material, it's not on the job. It's specially made for what we need here to make it happen. And the stress on that post-tensioning is in the magnitude of 3 million pounds. That's a big number to me. So there's a lot of uh, working with the engineers and whatnot. We've all been very careful about how we're going to approach this project and, again, making it safe through the construction and getting the permanent repair back in place. The permanent plates themselves, we have two plates on each side. They're 150 feet long, two and a quarter inches thick. They weigh 53 uh, tons, and there's 3,000 bolts that are going to attach those plates. So a lot of work. I will assure you this. Sometimes you may look on the bridge, and you may not see anybody, but I guarantee you that there's somebody somewhere looking at shop drawings, fabrication. We are working on this 24 hours a day. We have two plants that are doing the fabrication for the metals we need. They are committed to working around the clock. 
working through whatever holidays we may have and getting this material. We are at the front of the line. They pushed everybody else to the side. So we are first and foremost in getting the materials to this job site as soon as possible. Um, as far as the inspections that are going on, we're having a full review of, of the, uh, the arts that's going on right now. Michael Baker's doing that. And from the deck down, HNTB is doing that. And we're doing a lot more than what we would normally do in a normal bridge inspection that's required of us. All the different wells that are in that beam, we're using ultrasound testing to actually look inside the well to make sure it's all good and there's no issues there. Um, that is about a four week process. So during that process, we're getting information every day. So at some point through that process, the engineers are gonna have a high level of comfort with that bridge because there's two things that gotta happen to open the bridge. We gotta get the permanent plates on and we have to have a comfort level that there's no other issues out there. And if we do find an issue, that could impact the opening of the bridge. So as I told you, we're uh, expecting materials on the bridge latter part of June. We'll start installation of those products as soon as they hit the line, and we expe expect the installation of that product to go through July. So it may go into August, but we're, that's sort of the order of magnitude we're looking at now. I really want to give you a date, but until we work some uh, further details out, that's about where we are as far as opening it up. You know, it was asked at a pre previous prep press conference about the public's perception as far as having a comfort level to go back across that bridge once we open it up and taking this inve investigation and an inspection for what we're doing out there and taking it to another level and looking at all the wells and whatnot, we are hoping that conveys to the public how serious it is that their perception of that bridge, once they get back on it, it's going to be safe for them. Last thing I want to hit is the I-55 bridge. Arkansas asked us to look at that uh, bridge after we started loading it up and just I, I told you before out of an overabundance of caution we had no concerns with that bridge but after our bridge review that we finished up yesterday we have found that all the previous inspection work done by Arkansas DOT accurately reflects the condition of that bridge. It's a ro robust bridge even though it's 70 years old it's a very stout bridge and the load rating through the model that RDOT runs on that bridge shows that that bridge can carry all the current design that's on that bridge site right now. So we do not have any issues there. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Robert Moore. I'm the chairman of the Arkansas Highway Commission on behalf of my fellow commissioners and uh, our director, Laurie Tudor, I want to uh, give a special thanks to the Federal Highway Administration and to uh, Tennessee Department of Transportation. As you just heard from uh, Commissioner Bright's uh, briefing, uh, they are the lead agency in overseeing the construction work. And I know uh, each of you who are here today and those who are, are joining us via the media, from that briefing we know that uh, TDOT uh, absolutely uh, knows what they're doing. This is in the best hands, uh, safety being the paramount issue for the workers and for the safety of traveling public as they return. So uh, I want to say a special thank you. Uh, also, the mayor's congressman, uh, it's good to be here with you today. And of course, uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you as we had a chance to visit. Uh, it is so uh, uh, keenly important, I think, uh, in the world in which we live now where uh, our divisiveness sometimes uh, overshadows our abilities to come together and, and an event like this where adversity uh, uh, is focused upon uh, the necessity of coming together when we have uh, the leaders of the various states and the agencies and the federal government come together as one uh, to find a solution it represents the best is what we are uh, as Americans and hopefully uh, as one of the speakers said we'll set a model for uh, work that's done in Washington where we do learn to cooperate and get along and take care of the business of the American people. Um, one thing that this does, uh, the condition of the bridge and the work's being done certainly has been adequately covered. Uh, one thing that I, I would like to follow up on very briefly is the fact that this does, uh, in the face of this adversity, points up uh, that we have a very aging uh, infrastructure in this country. And like we tend to do uh, sometime in government, we keep kicking the can down the road. Uh, everybody knows that it's aging. We talk about it, but we don't quite find the will to get something done. 
And when you have a situation like this that, thank goodness, was averted before a catastrophe occurred, uh, it puts on the bright lights that it's time uh, to stop the talk and bring on the action. So, uh, Mr. Secretary, I want to especially thank you again and thank the administration for making this a priority of uh, finding funding to deal with the problems in our aging infrastructure. Uh, at, at RDOT, our core values, uh, our top three core values are uh, safety, public service, and teamwork. I've seen that uh, throughout, uh, as I've seen uh, RDOT from uh, the, the, the high echelon to the employees doing the work uh, dealing with this situation. Uh, I've had a chance to observe it today. I certainly uh, I see that in my, my meeting and, and our briefing with uh, Commissioner Bright and members of the Federal Highway Administration. So once again, I want to close and just say thank you for everybody. Uh, it's, a, it's a sad day that brings us together, but a good day to bring us together with a resolve that uh, we will uh, meet the needs of the future for the people of this particular area and the people of the United States so that they can have, once again, safe travel uh, across the bridge here at this, met uh, at this very important metropolitan area. Thank you very much. There are going to be serious discussion about past this bridge being repaired and, and reopened. Well, uh, Representative Cohn and others have uh, mentioned that that, uh, of course, would be a decision to be made uh, by the states and, and the local communities here. Uh, what I will say is that uh, this is a time for us to make sure we gather the resources, both to look after what we have and to expand where there needs to be expansion. And it's one of the reasons why we're putting such a priority on infrastructure investment right now in this administration. Well, uh, certainly that's a concern. That's one of the reasons why we're doing a, a review of uh, the entire uh, bridge program uh, here to, to see what may have happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, our, our first concern, uh, as is true for everybody up here, is safety. Uh, we also know the economic impact when there's a disruption like that. Uh, uh, we're certainly pleased and fortunate that uh, uh, this issue was discovered by means of an inspection rather than by means of a failure. Uh, but now we've got to make sure that the process, uh, we understand the process end to end and uh, can learn from that for the future. plan for the infrastructure is, goes into the trillions, uh, one point something trillions of dollars. Republicans have looked for a smaller, more narrower plan. Um, wh where are we right now in terms of bridging the gap and how are negotiations going? So we've seen movement in the uh, uh, last uh, formal counteroffer put together by the president. Uh, our administration moved by about half a trillion dollars. Uh, we also saw in the, the, the counter that came through from the group led by Senator Capito earlier uh, what seemed to be an embrace of the principle that something on the order of a trillion dollars around the transportation uh, side of things was appropriate. Uh, still a lot of work to do to make that apples to apples to see if there's overlap. Uh, I know the President and Senator Capito had another conversation yesterday, and I believe they're planning yet another one tomorrow. Uh, so what I'd say is the uh, conversations in good faith are continuing. Uh, we are eager to make sure those conversations get every opportunity to succeed. But the President's also said inaction is not an option. And uh, we, we do know that there's a, there's a clock on all this. Uh, I think uh, that, that that action in terms of the conversations, uh, especially with the, the senators who've been most involved, will continue over the next few days. Uh, but I'd also uh, point again that uh, uh, Representative Cohen and, and uh, his uh, colleagues on the House Transportation Infrastructure Committee uh, they have a markup scheduled this coming Wednesday, and so uh, that also represents uh, uh, a real uh, clock on uh, the need to uh, make some progress over the next few days. Based on what you're hearing today about the importance of inner cross-country travel, do you think if whatever bill is passed, do you think the third bridge should be more, moved higher up in the priority list when considering what new infrastructure to build? Well, I think what, what you saw here is that uh, there are two bridges, and they're the only ones for a long, long way. And when one of them goes out, everything depends on that remaining bridge, which is why I know there's interest uh, in adding to that. Again, it's not my place to tell the communities or the states uh, what the uh, right solution is for them. But what I will say is I do think there's a federal role 
in making sure that there are more resources available for federal support for these kinds of uh, projects when they're decided on by, by states and communities. Uh, and Bridges is an area of real emphasis in the President's jobs plan, as, as you uh, likely saw, both in terms of repairing the ones we've got and a program to uh, address the 10 most economically significant bridges that need major repair. Uh, as well as 10,000 bridges across the country, but also looking into where we need to uh, uh, add uh, add new resources. You spoke with some of the crews on the ground. What are some of the things that we need to make this job work? Well, when you talk to the folks who uh, every day are are working in this industry, what what they really need is certainty. Uh, they need predictability, and that's challenging, obviously, when you have a disruption. We've got to remember this doesn't just impact uh, all of us who might travel uh, uh, in our personal lives uh, on, on these roads, um, but a lot of workers are impacted by this. Workers who may live a long way away, but they come through this community several times a week as, for example, drivers. Uh, one uh, uh, person earlier today from a family-owned trucking firm said uh, to me, infrastructure is our workplace. And so it's, it's a reminder just how much is on the line for them, both in terms of it working well and, of course, it being safe. Uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, we really appreciate the, uh, uh, the work that's gone on here to try to uh, keep the public informed and, and to be honest when uh, all the answers aren't there yet uh, because, uh, you know, there will be a lot of pressure to, to uh, say that things are certain before they are. As, as you heard uh, Commissioner uh, Bright explaining, uh, the, the kinds of just physical parts, it's not like you're running down to Home Depot to get the parts that need to go into this, uh, this bridge. Many of them actually have to be fabricated on a custom basis. Then you've got the inspections. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that any process uh, uh, that could be more efficient than it is or where we could try to uh, try to help uh, align people or get information flowing that we're, we're supporting the states and their leadership there. Um, but also the good information is going out to drivers and others who count on these bridges about what to expect if they're facing decisions, for example, about whether to plan their routes differently until the bridge is back up and running. Are you concerned that uh, this all may be happening too late or we may have more of this before we can start patching the holes with that you know, infrastructure plan proposed by President Biden? And how much does this just show how critical this is to be done as soon as possible and get these, these bills passed? Well, you know, we have, as a country, really been coasting off of infrastructure decisions that were made generations ago. And they served America well in the 20th century and into the beginning of the 21st. Uh, but it is long past time for those generations now in positions of responsibility to do our part. As the saying goes, the, the best time to do uh, uh, something like this is yesterday. The second best time is today. And that's why the president has such a sense of urgency around infrastructure policy in general in this country. Department of Transportation doing to ensure a mistake like this doesn't happen. Again, not only in Memphis, but across the U.S. Are any standards, criteria, or any changes um, being made to improve bridge inspections? So a big part of the role of the Federal Highway Administration is to set federal standards and to make sure that they are met. And that's why there will be an assessment of the program uh, to try to get a sense of uh, any issues that, that need to be addressed. And, of course, we always feed that back into our own processes and oversight uh, so that we can look to the future. Uh, the bottom line across all of this has to be safety. Uh, again, it, uh, certainly uh, we would much rather be in this position than uh, having witnessed a failure. Uh, but we also uh, wish that we weren't in this position at all, and, and that, again, just points to uh, the importance of everything we do around infrastructure work. All right. Uh, well, again, uh, thank you, and I want to thank everybody for the uh, warm welcome here. Uh, it's been a, a, a short visit, but, uh, uh, but a, uh, a pleasure to uh, get to know folks here. I knew I could expect uh, uh, friendliness, and I knew I could expect good barbecue. Uh, I did not expect to be literally dazzled by the light uh, shining off of what I can only assume is the world's largest Bass Pro Shops. Um, but uh, uh, Memphis and this region have uh, uh, once again demonstrated why they're so important, uh, both when you all face a challenge, the whole country feels it, as is the case with logistics, uh, but also this is part of the beating heart of our country, and we really appreciate the cooperation that uh, our Department of, Employee, uh, Department of Transportation employees have had uh, with local and state authorities here. Thanks again for coming out.